You're listening to Off to Market with Scott Farley and Hamish Chadwick. I'm Hamish. And I'm Scott. And this is episode 12 of Off to Market. And I thought we would start talking about our actual podcast. I wanted to talk about what we're doing here in terms of uh, the actual podcast itself. So uh, we've been covering a lot of topics in the last few weeks, which has been great. But I think we need to just... I think it would be interesting for people to hear about why we started it. And I think for, for me, I wanted to start doing, I've been wanting to do a podcast for years and I think uh, it's become easier to do in the last, well, I think in the last couple of years with a lot of the platforms and technology. I mean, we I'm recording this on an iPhone, so nothing fancy yet. Uh, I've got an external microphone, but um, yeah, I really wanted to, I just sort of made a rule with my own marketing this year and that was to produce more than I consume because I do a lot of reading uh, and obviously listen to a, a lot of other podcasts and videos on marketing, etc. And I thought, you know what, there's just so much of it out there. I might as well start producing uh, something myself, which I, you know, we, we, we now have stuck to our goal. Well, we think last week was the only week we didn't actually publish a, an episode since we commenced. Yeah, that's mainly due to holidays and... And Scott. So my, it's uh, Scott's fault. fault. So the, the hate mail has come in. I've forwarded it all to Scott. No, <laughs> no but in all seriousness, I mean, we have, we, we're sticking to our goal, which is to produce an episode a week. Um, and it's been fun. And I think for, for me anyway, it's it's a learning learning curve. I think the more you... I think that's that old saying, you know, the more you teach, the more you learn. I'm not sure if that's a common saying, but, <laughs> but certainly I know for Scott, you've said the same thing. Like you, you've organised your self in terms of each, each episode we talk about a particular subject matter mm. and you've got to sit down and think about how you would actually explain what you do and I think that's what to you and I seems quite straightforward mm. easy sometimes you think it's a no-brainer for mm. a lot of people it, it's not and I think that's that was the purpose for me as well was to impart knowledge and genuinely help people I mean we're not I don't expect to to you know I'm not doing this as a commercial venture in terms of making money out of the podcast for itself I, I think that's a bit ridiculous I mean I know with the system that I use for uploading the podcast it keeps asking me you know do you want to monetize your podcast do you want to charge per episode I mean I think that's getting I mean you know for, that's a bit wishful I not, think not the reason we're doing it yeah. well it well it'd be nice but yeah. I don't think I mean no. people have said oh it's worth a lot of money but I, no it's, it's worth more to get our information out there and to actually help people And I know we have actually helped people because I've had comments saying you know oh that's really interesting what you spoke about last week i've changed my mind about something or it's made me think a little bit differently about mm. a marketing concept or or an idea that i've got it's interesting to hear what scott has said in terms of the approach and whether the, the idea is worth following through so i think those are the sort of comments that's why we're doing it is to just get people a little bit more aware and just get the knowledge out there so mm. so what, 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 what do you what do you think scott well you know when you first approached me about this i was sort of like oh it's a great opportunity wasn't really sure what was involved, but I've always talked about mentoring students because I know when you first come out of university in this field, it's very hard to get information. You really have just the basics. And the first few years of being an industrial designer were frightening as hell for mm. a student. But the problem is I'm here beavering away at the desk all the time. I just spend 60 hours in front of my computer just trying to get work done. And you know, there's very little opportunity for me to go and mentor somebody or bring an internship in. I, I get a lot of a lot of requests, mm -hmm. and I generally have to ten, turn them down. I think I did my first one the other week. That was for a uh, I, I own a student, a year twelve student, and he came in, but it was only a two week two week stint. And um, you know, basically, I, did, I was very straightforward with him and said, "Look, I have got limited time. I'll be mm. I'll be working my way. I'm going to set you a project. I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to guide you through it." But then it's up to you and he did a great job on it and he learned a hell of a lot in two weeks but i can't do that all the time it does take a lot of time so the podcast for me even though it frightened the hell out of me because i'm like wow speaking into a microphone <laughs> how's it going to go are you going to be all tongue-tied la 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 and you, you know also putting yourself out there in the public which is a bit, little bit a bit, a bit daunting and uh, and i also didn't know how to how to get it to to the platforms so luckily you did all that work for me and i appreciate that uh, because i probably would never do it i would never have the time to learn it all and put it all together and i understand from what you've been telling me there's a hell of a lot of work involved in it but the great thing for me is you know i have all this knowledge over the years and it's fairly specific you know not many people do first to world 100 year change products as their main criteria most industrial designers think of these projects that I do as grade Z projects. Mm. They wouldn't go near them if they don't have to. Mm. Um, whereas I, I consider them my, my A grade projects. I just love them. And, um, you know, get great results with people. 
you know, great result, results for Australia and the Australian export market, and I love it. I'm really passionate about it. I've got massive, lofty dreams, and uh, and it's my passion, it's my love invention. Mm. So, yeah, it's great for me to be able to sort of just put that forward every week. And it's amazing when you when you go through what you've got to cover and you start speaking about it, how much you do know about it. And hopefully, there are people out there who've got no other way of finding that information, and they can just tap into the podcast mm. and listen to it on the way to work or whatever and and get something out of it. I, I, I am now a massive fan of podcasts. I listen to podcasts instead of the radio now. I'm, he, I'm he, even listens, he even listens to his time. own podcast. I have to because Hamish makes me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make you do anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it has been very good for me. I, I have enjoyed it immensely and um, yeah, hopefully other people are getting something out of it. Good. Yeah, well, that's the point. I mean, I, that's the you know going back to the first episode. I mean, we really hashed that. I, I mean, I knew that, and that was the point. And I said to you, I remember telling you at the start. I said, look, it's probably going to be a bit rough. We're both looking at this microphone in the middle of the table. We've got all these dot points. I think that's what really stuffed us up. Is we just had too many uh, expectations. I think before we started, and I said, you know what, doesn't matter. I'm just going to hit record, stop it. I'm going to go back and edit it as best I can to take all the ums and the ahs out and all the other pauses and what are we doing and which page am I on and which dot point am I up to? And we, we did it. And I remember I got quite a bit of, well, not criticism, but just, you know, people contacted me saying, oh, you know, you could have done that a bit better and you could have, you know, taken that out and put this in and oh, it sounded a bit clunky. And I thought, well, yeah, that's okay, great, thanks. But at least I've done it yeah. because, you know, I'd been procrastinating for what, maybe two years and really the, the and that's what I wanted to, you know, make, uh, sure everyone knows here is that if you think you want to do a podcast just just do it if you've got a, an iphone or a smartphone and you've got a, an app that records voice you can start and yeah. that's what we're doing i mean we we'll, we will upgrade to a better microphone i'm sure at some point but the the point is the content if you've got if you think you've got something interesting to say then just get it out there that's that's the point the, the podcast i listen to when they're quite human and conversational i really enjoy them mm. if they're too stilted and, and uh polished you're sort of like, oh, is this, is, it, what, is this what are they trying to sell? Is it commercial? And is it for the right reasons? I really like the, the conversational type podcast. It, it's got a human element about it. So I guess the thing is, yeah, just forget your uh, ego and just jump in there and get yeah, your message well, I, out there. But I think also too, I mean, like I said before, you know, it was a, it's, a, it's a chance for me to structure some of the knowledge that I have and some of the processes that I go through because when you're doing a project, and I'll admit this, that you, you don't, there's no i don't use a gantt chart i mean there is a process you have a start and finish uh, based on objectives but you don't really you know you don't get up on a monday morning and go right i've got task one two and three that i want to complete by wednesday at one o'clock you just go with the flow in terms of what the client needs because you've usually got to move pretty quickly especially in the markets that we're talking about with inventions uh, and ideas because people are usually all over the place you know they've got there are different stages of their their project and you've got to be able to move quickly in terms of the requirement for going to market. So it could mean one week you're doing a Facebook page for them, and then the next week you're worrying about taglines and things like that, only because they've got to get things out in a particular order. Mm. So to actually sit down and formalize and go through and tell people, well, this is what's involved and this is what's required, uh, step one to step whatever it is, step 10, if you like. Uh, yeah, it's been very interesting for me to actually you know try and work out what that all is mm. uh, because no pro no two projects are the same mm. and no two objectives are the same so yeah, it's, there's uh, a, bit, a bit to the background i've even had a, one of my clients ring me and ask ask if they can talk to hamish about how he how he set the podcasts up um oh yeah I'm that's not, right i'm not sure that <laughs> hamish was all that willing to become mm. a podcast uh, specialist but certainly a lot of knowledge there that, that could be helpful well yeah and look I'm, I'm, I'm happy to share if if, you, if anyone listening to this has got any questions I'm very happy to share what what um, what processes I use what software I use uh, the I mean I, I'm I look I should say I've had a background in sound engineering many many years ago so uh, audio editing isn't I'm not not afraid of doing that I use garage band uh, on my um, uh, computer so it's I'm not worried that's all sort of very familiar territory for me in terms of mixing in voices I mean we've got a professional voice over to do the intro I chose some music and that wasn't expensive was it uh, not really no, no very very cost effective yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That guy's actually since put his fees up just before. Oh, really? <laughs> so we got very cheap, but uh, but they, yeah, it's it, it's not hard to find. That's the thing. Yeah. If you you've just got to, I think the the problem with podcasting is it's it seems daunting at first because you 
or I think one of the most daunting things I found, and it was the most difficult, was getting it on iTunes. I think that's you've got to be very finicky. I said, sorry, they are very finicky with their rules. There, there is uh, requirements for JPEG sizes for the the cover of your, your podcast. Mm. So whatever image you see that happens to appear on uh, Apple Podcasts or iTunes, that has to be a specific size. It can't be any bigger or smaller than what they specify. Um, the description has to be a certain number of words. So you've got to watch your character count when you're putting in making up descriptions for your show and then you've got to have a description for each episode some platforms that stream don't like you to put things like episode numbers they mm. only like they only like you to put descriptions so you've got to be very mindful of all those things and i think uh, and statistics still show that apple is still the primary place where people use or that's a primary software that they use to access podcasts mm. Uh, so they they really do hold the market. I mean, there are other you know Spotify is now streaming podcasts. We're on there, so we're on Spotify. Uh, we're on Pod. Well, Podbean is the uh, host that we use for our podcast, and we also upload to YouTube as well. So we're across all platforms at the moment, and I think we've decided to do that. It's a it's a bit of work. So every episode we have to edit, uh, upload t- uh, primarily to Podbean, and then that automatically. Uh, shares to Spotify and iTunes, which is Apple Podcasts. Uh, and then what we do is create a, a video. It's just a still image at the moment. We haven't got any uh, video, actual video as such. We're both ugly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've both got faces for radio. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. So, you know, and, and so Scott, that's uh, actually, actually what Scott does. He's good at the, the video editing side of it. So I give him an MP3 file uh, and a JPEG, which has the... Uh, episode description in it and then he puts that together then shoots that back to me i upload that to youtube yeah. uh, and then put some tags in and descriptions because that, that's really what why we're doing youtube well there's two reasons really youtube is probably a very good platform for getting in front of new audiences because it's such a popular platform mm. uh still also and also it's also not it seems funny but it's it if you think about you know, when was the last time you watched something, or not even or listened to something on YouTube that didn't have any uh, video image? I know I've listened to all sorts of news reports and interviews with people, and you realise if you stop and think, you think, oh, that's on YouTube. It's not a video; it's just a file. Yeah. You, you, it's a podcast or it's an interview, whatever you want to call it. But it's still a very popular platform for just getting content out for yeah. audio, just but, audio only content. Yeah. Well, that's the reason we talked about YouTube is because when I went to share it to. Facebook, mm. my you know personal Facebook pages and, and the work ones. Mm. Um, I just realised that people had to then go to another platform to look at it or hear it. Mm. Whereas if you just had a YouTube file, they could download it directly from there. Well, I think the other point of it, yeah, the other point of using YouTube as well is it embeds a, 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 li- a little bit more effectively than some other formats. Like for instance, where we host it, Podbean, that you can embed to Facebook or promote it to Facebook from Podbean, but it. It gives a funny. You, you can cons- you've got some s- control over the brand, like the look and feel of your uh, the audio player. But sometimes the audio player won't upload properly. Yeah, okay. uh, but YouTube is fairly seamless, and with that video file, sometimes I've actually uploaded directly to Facebook as just the one yeah. video yeah. file and shared that. But then things like LinkedIn, YouTube's no problem. Yeah. That that links very well in. However, the other uh, channels that we might use, like iTunes, doesn't embed well in, into LinkedIn. Well, that's what I found anyway. Someone yeah. might want to probably correct me on that but that's just through the top trial and error that we've used for this so far and easy. that's the thing you've just got to there is a little <laughs> bit of effort involved at the start but I think obviously as a show I mean let's just say by the end of the year we've got an amazing following um, we might decide to cut back uh, some of the places where we publish for instance so you know we might drop YouTube off potentially because it just means less effort for us in terms of how we get the content out hmm. but I think at the moment it's good to try and get as many people in front of the content as possible. Yeah, um, we'll we'll keep using all channels. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, and I think it's in, I think Spotify is good too because in Spotify I share to uh, Instagram stories. There's a there's a good link there. You can actually share um, Spotify content very easily through Instagram, but it won't share easily through other platforms. Mm. So it's mm. yeah, it, there's there's quite a bit involved. And obviously, you know, these yeah, the things progress and change. Pr- promoting the. <laughs> The podcast as well, which you've just sent me a link link to this morning, which talks about different ways of um, you know, organically sharing mm. or organically gather, gathering followers. Because you know you got to think about it. Like we're in an obscure area, or well, I am in an, in an obscure area. Mm. What's going to make somebody come on 
you know, if they don't look at podcasts, which I never used to look at podcasts until we started doing them, mm. what's going to make them go to our site? You know, there's probably people out there who could benefit from it. We're going to try and somehow manage to get those people in front of it so that they can they can see it and mm. know it's there. And uh, and there's a few tricks to doing that, which we're learning about at the moment. And um, some some of those tricks are in tying in with like-minded podcasts and cross cross pollinating each other's information. Mm. But I think the the key is, and this is what we would I think both like to impress is, is that it's it's the content counts. Mm. So I mean, there's a lot of information out there. If you if you start getting into podcasting, uh, when we did, and especially I did, you, you read so much material and you listen to so many people about producing podcasts that it's very easy to get caught up in the technical side of it which is you know recording and should you get it I mean apparently one of the, the big questions when people are starting a podcast and I found this a bit unbelievable but I, I suppose that's what they say is people always ask oh what microphone should I use whereas I took the approach of I, I really couldn't care less I mean the phones these days that we all use have got very good microphones on them all already uh, I don't think that's a I don't think that should be a primary concern it's the content that counts and I thought you know teaming up with Scott that was a good choice and the content that we structured for the episode so far have all been as far as I'm concerned very good and it can only get better we we've only just today mentioned the fact that we're only using a lapel microphone which works fine but um, yeah it's not a primary concern so I think you've really got to focus on your content and the marketing of that content mm, cool Mm. No, we, we hope to uh, go forward and uh, do some interviews with people who are in other areas of interest. And in the same way, sort of uh, Hamish is in a way interviewing me, then I interview him back. We're going to take people from the outside experts in the field that we use and, and trust and try and get their knowledge down on, on, uh, on the podcast as well. So, you know, more stuff, more stuff to feed into uh, the area of our, of our expertise. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, so it's, uh, it's yeah, still, still a long way to go, but I think the other key thing to mention too is there's so much content flying around and, you know, I mean, I suppose my approach with a lot of marketing is, as you know from listening to me, is I can get quite uh, sceptical about particular strategies and you could argue that there's so much content out there, who's going to listen to us, but the point of it is I think people consume more than they produce. That's as in people that should be marketing. You know, it's too easy to sit on Facebook all day. It's too easy to look at Instagram. It's too easy to look at these people that are producing content and get despondent and think, well, you know, who, how am I going to get, get above the noise? But really, get in there and do it. And the way you would get above the noise eventually is good quality content. And that's mm -hmm. just being honest and providing information which isn't salesy because we don't push any products uh, yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll never do that. That's not what this is about. So it's just a focus on um, making sure people are being assisted by what we know. Yeah, that's been good. I really enjoyed it. And um, it's amazing you, how nice it is to get, oh, I am really you enjoying it. You will continue to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's nice to know that someone might be benefiting from all the years of, of mm. uh, knowledge or, or all the years of experience that we've built up in a, an obscure area. Yes, it is. Great. So, <laughs> Scott's going to be the wind up. Hey, the wind up this time. Usually I'm babbling. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week. You've been listening to Off to Market with Scott Farley and Hamish Chadwick.